Hi there again, and welcome to another part of The Plain Truth. Joining me again is the awesome Captain Al. Hi, Captain Al. Hi, Matt. How are things? Uh, yeah, very good, thank you. Very good. Still very good. warm here at the moment. It's doing. I don't know what it's like in... Uh, where about, whereabouts are you at the moment? Uh, I'm in the northwest of England, um, where it's, uh, yeah, it's quite muggy. Is it? Right, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thunderstorms and hail, no doubt. <laughs> Oh, well, anything's possible with this summer so far. <laughs> Good point, yes, yeah. I'm just waiting for the locusts to arrive. Right. <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's been a funny old year. I think that, that is anything, as you say, anything's possible at the moment. Now, regular listeners to the show will remember that uh, I went on a little taste of flight after Al had very kindly given me some uh, fear of flying counselling, shall we say, because I was uh, about to do some flying for work for the first time. And Owen, who's cabin crew, good friend of uh, all of ours, took us on a, took me, sorry, on a flight, uh, a test flight to see how I got on. And one of the things that I remember most uh, about our little flight to Toulouse was... Um, obviously being very nervous at that initial uh, stage uh, and before we took off um, suddenly the aircraft was all plunged into darkness uh, all the emergency lights came on and basically uh, poor Owen was after having to sort of talk me off a ledge now he mentioned that apparently that it was the uh, GPU unit had basically been unplugged and that's why the aircraft had all been uh, plunged into darkness but one of the other things that, that another acronym was that, that was thrown at me at a similar time was the APU so what is the GPU and the APU and what are the differences Okay, well, let's get the acronyms out of the way first. So GPU, ground power unit, and APU, auxiliary power unit. Right. So let's have a look at an aeroplane. So it's designed to be operating in the air with the engines running. So when it's on the ground with the engine stopped, it has batteries, of course, but those batteries aren't really capable of powering all of the systems and they have no way of providing any air conditioning. So we need some way of powering the aircraft when the engines aren't running, which would be typically on the ground. So we usually use the auxiliary power unit, which is a small jet engine located usually in the tail of the aircraft. And when I say small, uh, just a bit bigger than a suitcase, really. Big suitcase size. Now, that little jet engine and you will quite often see the exhaust for it coming out of the very rear of the tail of the aircraft is able to do two things it's able to provide electricity and it's also able to produce air now that air the pneumatic supply is then able to drive the air conditioning units and provide heat if it's cold or cool air if it's hot and also electrics to supply the aircraft now that's great but it's an engine and therefore it requires fuel and fuel is expensive and also that auxiliary power unit makes a lot of noise. So where we can, we would like to utilize some cheaper form of power. And that is where the ground power unit comes in. Now it can take the format of two particular styles. There'll be let's just say a big sort of like diesel generator on wheels, um, the size of a small van that can be towed around, uh, or it can actually be part of the air bridge and it's just an umbilical cord that comes uh, from the aircraft that then is plugged into it. So what we try to do is we try to use the, the ground power wherever possible because A, it's cheaper, uh, B, it makes less noise, and quite important these days, it's environmentally more favourable. Now, here's the thing. If we're sat on the aircraft at the gate and the ground power is connected, that sort of umbilical cord, and we remove that power, the only thing that is powering the aircraft at that time is the batteries. And, okay, they're reasonable size batteries, but they're not huge. So the aeroplane has to dispense with non-essential services. So the cabin lights go out. And therefore, because by default we have a fault on the aircraft, the emergency lights will come on because the systems don't know exactly what's happened here. So by default, the emergency lights will come on when the power goes off. 
So in your particular case, what happened is that the ground crew disconnected the ground power before the auxiliary power unit had been started and thereby plunging the aircraft into darkness. <laughs> what is supposed to happen is the ground crew are supposed to knock on the side of the aeroplane and wait for the signal from the pilots to indicate that they may disconnect. Now, before any ground crew at any airports write in, phone in, or lynch <laughs> me on the corner of the street, very occasionally the umbilical cord, the connector, can just drop out, especially if it's windy. So in your case, it may have been just an unintentional disconnection, or indeed the ground power unit might have, you know, had a technical fault or run out of fuel. May not have been a careless ground operative. And I suppose in, now, in, in defence of everyone, I suppose, I mean, they didn't know that the person, one of the people on that aircraft, was having his first test of flight since he developed a fear of flying. So, I mean, the timing couldn't have been more wrong. <laughs> indeed. Now, this takes me on to uh, another little area, and that is the fact that when it's very, very hot or very, very cold, so uh, I want you to imagine being in Seville in Spain in the middle of summer where the outside air temperature is sort of 43, oh. 44 degrees. Yes, please. <laughs> um, and the sun is beating down. And, of course, the aeroplane is just like a, a big greenhouse, really, yeah. isn't it, with all of those windows. So it can get very hot in the cabin. Now, one of the problems that we have is that a lot of airports prohibit the use of running the APU, that's the little jet engine at the back, for anything more than five minutes after arrival and no more than five minutes before departure. Now, I said to you that that APU provides electric and air, pneumatic, which we can run the air conditioning. So, what do we do for air conditioning when it's very hot or very cold? Well, the good news, in some ways, is that airports are able to provide another form of umbilical cord, a big tube, that they pump conditioned air into the cabin. And this is what you're intended to use. Here's the small problem. Some airports maintain their air conditioning systems better than others. <laughs> so as pilots, you can sometimes between, get stuck between a rock and a hard place. It's warm in the cabin but not excessively so, but people would like it cooler. The airport have provided you with conditioned air. It is cooler than the ambient air, but not by much. And the fines for unlawfully, in inverted commas, running the APU can be in the tens of thousands of euros. Wow. Which the airlines don't like to pay. Uh, no, I can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> so there are procedures to get dispensation from the airport, but as you can imagine, it's not that straightforward because it has to be passed up through several people. So are, so are, that some, is, are some of those restrictions uh, uh, involving the ground power unit as well? Are there restrictions in place for, for running that? No, there's, there's no restrictions usually for the ground power unit because the ones on the air bridge are effectively silent. It's just part of the yeah. uh, infrastructure of the airport. Uh, the diesel-powered ones, yeah, they're noisy, but not as noisy as a jet engine. Right, yeah. No, well, that, that's and we have to have some form of electrical supply, if nothing else, on the ground, because the batteries will run flat after half an hour. Gosh, okay. Um, so, I, I mean, uh, uh, difficult for for your your scenario, I know, because I know you haven't done a great deal of uh, what I call low cost um flying in your experience but so if, if you've got an aircraft that's doing a, a short turnaround say uh, i'll use ryanair as an example obviously so it's it's uh, it's landed uh, it's taken off at stansted it's it's gone to say toulouse and then it's going to go toulouse back to stansted um that bit when it gets to toulouse i mean would it normally i mean because they're they're not on the ground for very long are they? they're only there for about sort of probably 20 25 minutes something like that uh, yes. obviously they can't leave the the apu running in that scenario but would they plug into uh, some kind of unit to keep the, the the aircraft at a comfortable temperature okay so this is where it becomes a little bit more complicated so oh, i'm so glad i asked <laughs> so to avoid lawyers getting involved okay <laughs> if we were to say an airline that operates on a low-cost model similar to Ryanair, <laughs> but not Ryanair, okay. then everything associated with aviation comes at a cost. 
So the ground power you have to pay for. If you want ground air conditioning, you have to pay for it. If you want to air condition the cabin with the auxiliary power unit, the APU, that comes at a cost by virtue of the fuel that it needs to run. And also, it's a little engine, so it needs to be serviced, etc., etc. So there is a, a cost per minute for running it. So this is where you kind of fall into the category of you pay your money, you take your choice. <laughs> So long as it is not dangerously hot in the cabin, an airline operating on a basis similar to Ryanair, but not Ryanair, may have a policy that says, within this particular temperature regime, you do not pay for you know, additional air conditioning. It's hot, but it's safe. Other airlines that may operate on a full service basis that will look at it and go, well, you know, these passengers have paid £500 for their trip to Toulouse or Seville. Mm. Um, so we're going to, uh, you know, make them feel comfortable with an ice of 20, 21 degrees. The choice becomes uh, less relevant because there's, there's more money in the pot. Mm. Now I have to say that anything at the airport is expensive, not just as a passenger, but as an airline as well, okay? I so that, that ground air conditioning doesn't come cheap. No. Whether it's... Whether it's good or not, yes. um, you, you don't get a, a refund. If they've plugged it in, you're paying for it. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, Captain Al, thank you very much. My pleasure. <laughs>